Hey everyone. Today I'm just gonna do a quick video review. Well, not even a review, just a preview of the Dunton 48 port 2.5 gigabit. So 48 port 2.5 gigabit. And we have four 10, 10 gig SFPs. And then we got some 25 gig um, QSFPs here if you're feeling brave. So I just set this guy up. It came from AliExpress. Um, probably took maybe three weeks to get here. Wasn't too bad. Uh, total cost was somewhere a little bit over $700 with a uh, Valentine's Day discount. Probably could have used a bigger one, but I, I think I got $30 off. So total was about $720 all said and done, which yeah, it's on the high end, especially for, you know, essentially just a an experimental <laughs> home lab type switch. So, yeah, if you're if you're working on an enterprise grade environment, I probably wouldn't recommend you go this route, even though it is very inexpensive compared to you know some of the Cisco or God forbid other products that go up into the tens of thousands of dollars with something this capable. But you know, capability in, in terms of hardware, you probably saw the serve you know serve the home video. On the chip, I haven't opened this up yet. There is a warranty sticker on the side here, um, so I'm assuming it, you know, it might use the the better chip or the, the cheaper chip, probably the cheaper one. But um, this is a single power supply unit, so there's one here, and these fans here are, well, at least with just you know these two, this SFP here, 10 gig SFP here, and then this 2.5 gig. Actually, no, this is not at 2.5 gig at the moment connected to the interface here for the web management, but so with those two connected, it's actually not that loud. It's just, um, it's a, a low whoosh kind of sound, which isn't too bad. Um, but yeah, compared to, you know, some of the other switches I've seen, it's really not that abrasive and it's going in my, my server closet anyway. So I don't, I'm not too concerned about it that regardless. So it does have a console port. Um, it's supposed to be able to connect. I was not able to get the console port working. Um, I tried a bunch of different uh, baud rates, um, different settings, but no, the console port is, did not manage to get working. But that's okay because it does come with a default IP from the factory. So this one came with a 192, 168, 100, 100, and default login just admin, admin. And once you once you go in, it's not not too bad. So I'll, I'll show you here, and I'll. Alright, so here we have the web interface. So it does have an invalid certificate. Um, it looks like it's just a, a public key it's available. So nothing too surprising there. So you can see that the interface starts off in Chinese. You have to flip it over to English. And one, one thing of note is the default uh, from the factory IP address for the management interface is 192.168.100.100. But I have gone ahead and changed that in advance. And the username and password is admin admin as a default. So once you're in, you'll notice that some browsers will give you this error, not all of them. I haven't found a reason why for this yet, but it's something to be aware of. You know, this is a little bit of an off-brand switch, if you know what I mean. So you come here to the device management here. So it's pretty good, uh, you know, display of which ports are connected and, uh, and what they're doing. So you can see here that the model number is here, there's a dual power supply version of this one as well. It's a different model number. Um, I have not found that one on AliExpress, nor do I think I need that. You can see here that this U image um, version here is what the firmware is up, um, up to. I don't know what manufacturer is the originator of this, but it is the latest firmware according to um, the vendor and the responses online. So I changed the switch name to China 48, so I have a good indication. You can see here you got the stats, the CPU memory usage, and the temperature. Um, it's actually relatively quiet still, even with all these ports connected. It's quieter than my old Dell switch, which is saying something. So if you go to system management, you can see all the files, how much free space and boot is left over. You can do an image backup here and download the images too. So you can see that startup config here. Um, and then there's another one up here, which is the backup. So if you go to system config, you can set up all the the IP addresses, make sure to change your management IP here to whatever network you're going to be using here. Then change the name and whatever you need to. 
then here's for loading the configuration. There's log management. I don't know if there's a way to get syslog um, output, but there might be. You have SNMP. Um, let's see your interface. You can see the Ethernet status. You know which ones are connected to 2.5 gig, which ones are connected to 10 gig, and so on and so forth. So you can see here that you can see that the trunk or access ports. You can see the stats for the bandwidth, aggregations, drawer control, floor control. So port mirroring if you want to want to go there. So definitely some good good services there. So the key here is if you're setting up VLAN, so you go into VLAN, you can see the summary here. I'll tell you which VLANs that you have. Um, so you see here I have like some IoT, gas media. And so if you want to go first, you have to make sure that the interface is updated to the one that you set before. Then you can add them here. And then when you go into the access or trunk ports here, you can see here that you can determine them. Um, let's see, if you scroll over a little bit. Well, yeah, see here. Sorry, the screen's a little bit off, but you can add the VLAN ID tags here in the interface and uh, make sure that those trunk ports all have access. So on any ports here, you can you can set those VLANs up just like that. Take a look here, you can just add them to the permit VLAN. If you go to the summary, this is where you can take a look at all of your ports and VLANs. So you have to make sure that you name it and you set up the numbers. Um, and then for the ports themselves, here you can see that the mode is set up as access or trunk. So you have to actually go into here, make sure to flip this to trunk under the ethernet status here if you're planning on using the VLANs on them. But that's already set up for me, so I don't need to. In addition to VLANs, you have a VLAN classifier. I haven't used it, you can do all kinds of Mac stuff. Spanning tree, STP stuff, ERPS, which is, um, it's interesting. They have the this RRPP, which is a Huawei type thing. So uh, doesn't inspire confidence, but HP uses it too. So it's just a protocol. But all right, got IGMP snooping. So there you go. You got some deep, you know basic routing settings. You can set up statics. Oh, there actually is some interesting security stuff. I guess since this is uh, supposed to be a, an esports switch, you can see the sessions that are logged in. You can add users, but there's not really any MFA or anything options here. It's pretty basic. You can do ping trace route, and then you can save your config before rebooting, and then reboot the system. It'll pop everything up. And that is it. So let's see. For security, it's you know it's it's just a switch. You know everything's HTTPS anyway. Hopefully on your network, but so it's not the worst thing to have a you know cheap Chinese version up here for the price. For you can't really beat it. Um, in addition, yeah, the 2.5 gig ports, they do saturate at 2.35 gigs. Um, so it's it's close. Um, good enough for me anyway. Definitely a, an upgrade over the one gig that I had before. So yeah, that was a, just a quick you know overview of how the switch works. So far, it's been working well. Um, I haven't had any issues in terms of performance. It was just a drop-in replacement. You know, changed over the, the VLANs from my old switch, and it works well. So yeah, I recommend it if you... If you feel the need to upgrade to 2.5 gigs total. So yeah, right, we're signing off guys, thank you.